Good morning and welcome to a Sunday morning service. We are live on the on Facebook on the online church, and I am Stanley, and you are with me and my wife. Karen, goeie morgen, baie welkom hier by die dak gemeente. Um, live hier op Facebook zondag ochend. Um, ons saai volgend 6 uur uit, ons het 8 uur load sharing, so dit is ook om ons een beetje vroeg uit die kleur uit is volgend. Baie dankie vir elke wat inskakel, saam luister, en um, jy kan ook asjeblief die boodskap daar op die tijdlijn share, en dan ook op die tijd is ons gaan nou die link ook daar op, op WhatsApp sit. En as jy nog nie ons WhatsApp groepen hoort nie, stuur vir ons een nummerkie, en dan kan jy ook in ons WhatsApp groepen hoort, en so lekker van allemaal sy vrug daar eet op die WhatsApp groep, en dan krij jy ook die audio boodskappe, op die WhatsApp group loof die Heere. Yes, so praise the name of the Lord this morning. We're going to have a bilingual service once again. And um, I, I minister in English. <coughs> uh, my wife is ministering in Afrikaans. So heartfelt welcome this morning. As you are busy tuning in, please share the message. We are busy sharing the message as we start our service this morning. Um, we also have a WhatsApp group, so please go and join our WhatsApp group. Uh, you can also get the messages, the audio of all our sermons. And also um, in our congregation, there's a lot of people that participate. If there's something on their heart that they want to share with uh, uh, their fellow brothers and sisters, uh, we do it on our WhatsApp group. It's more an interactive platform that we have there as well. And then also, when you are on WhatsApp, share the link there to your status as well of the ministry, live ministry, um, to your status as well. And so, um, uh, all your friends who are on your WhatsApp uh, and your WhatsApp uh, <laughs> contact list can uh, see your status. And when they click on the link there on your status, they can also um, uh, come directly to the uh, sermon here on Facebook and then afterwards we share the video also on YouTube we've got a YouTube channel the same as the one you are busy uh, one that you are tuned into now you will see it is uh, our Afrikaans name is the online Kerk. it stands for the online church so this is what DAK means the online Kerk, the online church and then also we have a telegram group as well only uh, because we uh, on WhatsApp, uh, especially our f- iPhones, cannot uh, um, play the compressed audio file of WhatsApp. And then we have an uncompressed file on Telegram. If so, if you cannot play it on, on uh, WhatsApp, our compressed audio, please go and join our Telegram group. And it's only for the ministry. It's not for an interactive daily uh, encouragement that we have from our fellow brothers and sisters. Now this morning we are early, six o'clock. We have eight eight o'clock. We have load shedding, uh, then we just move our time slot. And this morning our time slot is six o'clock in the morning. It's not a usual time slot, but if uh, something like a load load shedding or whatever might be, we just move our time slot a little bit earlier. Or maybe later, but most of the time it is earlier and not later. So praise the name of the Lord this morning. We want to welcome you. As you are busy tuning in, please say hi. Give us a hi there, a wave or a thumbs up or a love that we know you are there. If you have never commented on uh, Facebook and if you are a regular that are tuned in live here and you've never said something, just say hi. I am here, I am from this uh, town or this country because um, worldwide people are listening to our message as well and are following the ministry. So we want to encourage you, please share the message as wide as you can. Uh, If you share it live, when you are live, it's way more effective. It's just an automatic thing of Facebook. Um, (laughs) It just gets to so many more people. Uh, when we are live, because they push the live services. Uh, good morning, heartfelt welcome, Joey and Werner and Michelle and Dani and Ria and Roland and Rina and Kitty, uh, and Shen and who's else there? I can't, cannot Miss even... Miss and Kathleen and Riala. Uh, there's so many tuned yeah, in this morning. Avani, Avani is tuned in. I see her face there. Oh. I don't see her name here, but I see her. 
Hi, Kanle. <laughs> One of our teenagers tuned in this morning. And also the children are listening with their parents. But I don't think this morning, if it's so early, except for Avani, <laughs> are tuned in so early with their parents. Maybe they are. Maybe they're still in their PJs. <laughs> they're in a, a, a um, lounge or sitting room. What, what is the other word? It's is the right word. The lounge. Uh, lounge. Lounge or sitting room. Uh, but I think today it's a lying room, not a sitting room. Or <laughs> just good. lying there in their beds wa- watching our sermon this morning. Goeiemorgen, ek luister na die kostbare woord wat weer gedeel word. Dankie Kitty, oh, a lot of waves and loves and hugs and kisses from everybody. <coughs> we are so privileged to be surrounded by so many people who really love us and love each other, who love the brotherhood, who love God, who love the Lord Jesus Christ has given their life to the Lord. And the purpose of the sermon of our, of our gathering is to encourage each other as believers and also to reach the lost. And that is also a main thing, is to reach the lost with the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is very important because He came to set us free from the bondage of sin Amen. and darkness and fear of eternal damnation. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Awesome, my friend. Yes, I see what you have to start with. Yes, yeah. Ah, we can manage to be here on our own. We're going to hear for a bit. We're going to dance. Not only we're going to dance, we're going to work and have a bit. Um, Wednesday we're going to have a bit. We're going to have a bit. Then we're going to have a bit. And then Donnerdag is the third episode of the Hivelik Deal Three. It is now the the um, Bible School. It is up on Flag Two, Flag Three. So we're going to have a bit. Third deal with Kathleen. Also, we're going to have a bit. 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 We're dat ons dan ook dan nachtmaal sal hier loof die Heere. En um, ek kijk nou vandag so'n bykie, ons het toch so'n 42 dagies oor ja. voor ons konferentie daar in Hartenbos. So ons is opgewonne, maar ook benauwd. So ons bid baie vir hierdie saak, dat die Heere krachtig deurbreek en dat hy help en al die dinge. So bly ook vir amal bid en vir ons bid en elke ding, so dat dit ek krachtig sal deurbreek daar in Hartenbos. En as jy nou eerst daarvan hoor en jy wil deelwees, kontak ons gerust. Dit is die tweede tot die 6 oktober daar in Hartenbos loof die Heere. Yes, amen. Um, if the Lord willing, next Sunday we will have a communion service as well. Uh, some know knows it as the Lord's Supper. Um, it's um, So we're going to have, a, if the Lord willing, next Sunday we can have communion as well. And then Wednesday evenings we have 6.30, a meeting, a gathering, a uh, uh, um, uh, live here on Facebook as well. Um, if there is something that comes in the way, like the load sharing or whatever, we will let you know uh, what time slot we will be having. And then Friday morning, 5.30, we also have a meeting. And then we have a Bible class, but that's only Afrikaans. That's on Thursdays, 6.30. And we're busy. At this stage, Kathleen is presenting the marital um Listen, 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 listen. <laughs> uh, subjects. Yes. So, um, if you, if you are if you are Afrikaans or if you can translate it to somebody in English, please listen to it and do translate it like that, yeah, so that we can all all learn and and be taught from the Word of God. Amen. And the way Kathleen <laughs> is presenting is it, it's insightful, and it is awesome to hear the Word in that way as well. Yes, amen. Met prankies and all. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, uh, this morning we're going to open up with prayer before we're going to continue. And our topic today is through his wounds. Yes, through his wounds we are healed. Now, um, usually when we are sick or ill, um, we get this from fellow brothers and sisters that uh, quotes this portion of scriptures. Through his wounds we are healed. And how must we see it and in what context is it written and today we're going to clarify this specific yeah, verse yes, yeah. <coughs> so we're going to start with prayer this morning and we thank the Lord that um, Tanya um, 
um, gave us some feedback. Her operation was successful. Um, we just uh, we are praying for her and her husband. Her yeah. husband had a finger operation the one day. She went for an ear operation the next day. <laughs> yeah, net so two days uit mekaar uit. Sy het hulle twee operaties gehad. Al twee suksesvol, so ons bid ook dat hulle net gezond sal word, nou dat daar geen komplikaties sal wees. Nie. Yes, Prijs and we're praying for all the sick, and we're praying, Marty has just asked us this morning that we should just pray for her as well. So we're going to pray for her, so we're going to mainly pray in Afrikaans, because all the people that we are praying for are Afrikaans people. <laughs> yes. Hey, boy, <laughs> is my... Praise the Lord. Say it, Middelburgse wereld. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and we thank you for the opportunity once again this morning that we can present your word and that we as Father believers can come together spiritually. Amen. Father, in, uh, in the heavenlies, we, have, taken, uh, we are, have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And I thank you, Father, this morning each one can be at, at his own home or at his own place wherever he might be, or even listening afterwards. But when we have your Spirit, Father, when we are born again, we are in your kingdom. Father, and your kingdom is so vast, it is so immense. Yeah. And I, I realized this week again, Father, that sometimes we want to see your kingdom as this world. It's got borders, it's got this country, and it can go only this far and that far. And this is how big this is, and we can measure it, and we can... Father, see how it looks, but to us, Father, your kingdom is invisible, but to you, the holy angels, all the spiritual beings, your kingdom is visible, it's a tangible kingdom, Father, it's a spiritual kingdom, it's an endless kingdom, it can expand, Father, through all eternity, it can grow and it can become bigger and bigger and bigger, Father, because you are the God of all eternity from the beginning you were and you will be until the end there is no change father in you hallelujah you you give us that assurance one day when we leave this earth and we are born again we are we have endured father we have uh, yet uh, lord ran the race and uh, father overcame and then one day we will be in your kingdom Amen. father we will live in your kingdom Whatever is there, Father, all that we need to know is how to get there. Father, sometimes we can be so occupied of what uh, and speculate of what is really in the kingdom of thee and we want to make so many doctrines of it. Father, it's just to realize that we need to get there and we need to live in love and harmony and holiness and purity and truth, Father, on earth in righteousness. And this is a very important aspect of your kingdom father to follow after righteousness and without the lord jesus christ in our hearts father without the spiritual rebirth we cannot live in, in uh, according to that righteousness and in that in that you know father we have a struggle in that you know lord there is a desire in our hearts to live righteously and to live holy and you are working in our hearts father through the word father through the spirit that Father, make your word become alive, Father, that, Lord, uh, present your word in your heart, and when we read your word, it becomes alive, and it works in us, and then we realize our shortcomings, and we, Father, can today, can repent. Today, Father, we can come to thee, we can submit to your word, and honor your word, Father, and say that your word is the highest authority. We are all sinners compared to the holiness of your word. And this is what Paul also realized, not that he still remained a sinner, Father, but compared to your word, in one instance it says, oh, Father, we are all liars compared Amen. to your word, Father. We are all sinners compared to your word, Father. But we are not sinners in that respect anymore because we have been taken out of the kingdom of darkness into yeah. the kingdom of light. We have received the adoption of children, adoption of sons, Father. And I thank you that we can be your child today by your spirit that are dwelling in our lives. With the day of our spiritual rebirth, we receive the power of your Holy Spirit. It's, it is in us. It's our own thinking, our own thoughts, our own sinful ways. Father, a lot of times, Lord, 
God, that quenches your spirit, Father, in us. Uh, the struggle that we have in us, Father, to overcome. Uh, hallelujah. And I thank you, Father, that you today, the power of the Holy Spirit, met ons kan praat, die woord kan bevestig, om ons los te maak en vry te maak, van onkinde skuldgevoelens, Father, we have ministered about this, Father, not to think of the past, not to dwell in the past, Hallelujah, nie om onself te verweid nie, Heere, nie om onself te kastei, oor dinge wat verby is nie, Father, as jy sê jy vergewe, jy spreek vry, dan spreek jy vry, en ek besef, dit is baie van ons probleem, Heere, my God, ons sikkel om te laat gaan, van dinge wat lang terug gebeur het, ons sikkel om te laat gaan, Vader, van baie dinge in ons leven. Heere, my God, en ek en my vrou praat na die dag so, Heere, en ons bid so, en ons roep uit, en ons besef, Vader, ons dien jy langer, as toe ons kinders was, Vader, as 19-jarige seen, het ek my leven met jy gegee, Vader, en toch is daar soveel dinge ingebrand en ingewortel, en oor die jare, Heere, my God, het baie van die dinge gegroei, en dit moet afsterf en dit moet verbreek word en ek dank jy vader, dier jy sê in Jezus Christus is daar verlossing, dier jy sê in Jezus Christus is daar bevrijding, dier jy sê in Jezus Christus kan ons oorwin vader, ons kan in blijdskap en in heerlijkheid lewe, elke dag van ons lewe en ons dank jy daarvoor, halleluja, dat wanneer jy met ons praat, wanneer jy met ons deel, is daar oorwinning, daar is verlossing, as ons die woord herken, as ons die woord in herkentenis bringe, en ons sê, Vader, ons weet, jyre, ek is hier skuldig, en daarom is die woord waarachtig vandag, halleluja, van nou af tot in alle eeuwigheid, is die woord levend en krachtig, Vader, om diep in te snui in ons harte, en ons siel, Vader, en ons dankie, vir dit wat die Heere, my God, dat die Heere Werner en Tanja so operatie suksesvol was, ons wil bid dat jy die geneesing in hulle lichame verder sal bewerkstellig vader, en dat die volkome geneesing sal wees, sonder enige komplikaties vader, ons loof en ons prijs, ons besef ook, medies kan daar net soveel gebeur vader, maar toch op die einde van die dag, die geneesing kom van jy af, die herstel kom van jy af vader, halleluja, dat er nie komplikaties en dinge sal wees nie, ons prijs hiervoor om ons loofie, ek wil ook bid vir my vrou vir ochend, vader, halleluja, ek wil bid dat jy haar genees, dat jy haar aan raak, vader, Heere my God, ek wil jy aan roep, vader, want jy is die God van geneesing, jy het vir ons die gave gegee, jy het uitgestort, jy het Jezus, jy het gesterf, en opgestaan in die door en die vijand oorwin, so dat ons die gaves kan kry, die gave is ook van die gees, en een van hulle is geneesing, van die aardse lichaam ook, en ek wil bid vir my vrou vandag, dat die haar krachtig sal genees, en sal aanraak, dat die heerlijkheid vader, asjeblief vader, dier haar lee, en dier haar lichaam sal breek, en dat jy, jyre my God, vandag kan genees, dat jy kan aanraak, en dat die heerlijkheid van jy, ook so bekend kan word, en haar aardse lichaam, ons dankie voor vader, ons bid so vir baie wat syk is vandag, vir baie, jyre, as baie wat kroniese syke het, vader, halleluja, wat vandag met geweldige pijn en probleem en dinge sit, en ons wil vraag, dat jy asjeblief sal genees, en dat jy asjeblief vader sal aanraak, dier die groot genade, en ons dankie voor vader in Jezus' naam, ons wil bid, dat jy my en my vrou sal lei in die bediening van die woord vandag, dat ons al woorde spreek van liefde, stigte en sankmoedigheid, vader, weesheid wat van jy afkom, vader, nie wat uit ons eie hart uitkom nie, maar wat van jy afkom, verleen vir ons dit, ons is so afhankelijk van jy vader, jyre, op een plek sê jy woord, jyre, juig met beving, vader, halleluja, en vader, om jy te vrees, jyre, is die beginsel van weesheid, en baie keer wanneer ons so voor die woord staan om het te bedien, as een vrees, as een benauwdheid in ons hart en oor jy, om die woord recht te snui, om nie, Heere my God, die woord te vervals, die woord te vertroebel met ons eie gedachte, karakter en idee nie, want ons besef, Vader, ons moet nie baie leermeesters wees nie, want ons gaan eendag geoordeel word, so dat jy help nie net om te praat en nie te doen nie, en ek wil bid, Vader, dat jy ons vandag gaan help, dat hy die woorde sal wees met sout besprinkel, aangename geere, lieflike geer, vader, wat ons kan antwoorde gee, kan losmaak en kan bevry van die werk van die vijand, ons dankie voor in Jezus' naam. Amen.
Hey, good morning. Susan is also tuned in. Paula is tuned in <laughs> as well. Praise the name Shall of the Lord. Shall we mind the Heere work on trend here under the young men? Yes. Um, ons Paula said yesterday for her boodschap, she said, I hope you sit. <laughs> ja, gelukkig, die sit ons. En, um, <laughs> die tuif, al waar nie, so my begin tale praat. Wow. So die Heere breek nie dier hier die jong mense sy harte, joh, nou voor jy vir hulle bid, die Heere al gewerk. Yes. So ons loof die Heere, <coughs> volgens saam met, al waar nie ook, dat die Heere krachtig vaar die Heere gebreek het, en as sy die Heere gebreek het, en dit is baie keer voel ons die Heere het, so krachtig die Heere gebreek in die manse leven. Maar ek besef gister, Heere, haar hart was oop, yes, haar hart was ontvankelijk, Yes. en sy het net oorgegeen en net tale gepraat, so dit is hoe makkelijk dit is, die jong mense leer ons mooi nie, so ons loof die Heere saam met haar, en ons bid ook vader, dat die Heere ons staand hou, nicht hou, waaksam hou, vir al ons jong mense, um, dit is so, Paula sê gister, dit voel of mense hulle in een glas kassie wil sit en oppas, en dit kom by my, dat, <laughs> Heere, dit is so amazing, yes. dat, toe ek nou so kyk, dat al die blommiekies nou hier so in die weeskaap, waar ons is ons nou al die blomme wat so oopgaan, en as die son nie skyn nie, dan hang die ou blommiekie sy gezicht hier so af, en gister toe ek nou die boodskap so van Paula kry, toe denk ek, jyre, dat die blommiekies het die son nodig, so dat hy gezicht hier kan oopgaan, mm. so dat hy mooi kan wees wie hy is, wow. en um, so ja, baie keer in ons geestelike leven het ons die son nodig, ons het die drukking nodig, ons het die verdrukking nodig, die son wat so erg op een mens skyn, dat daai lewe in die mens na vore kan kom, dat allemaal daai blom, daai vrug kan sien in die mense lewe, so mens wil baie keer beskerm, maar dit is juist waar in ons groei, dit is juist waar hy olie en al die mooie dinge vandaan kom, is juist hy die drukking, die verdrukking, die vervolging en al die dinge, die maats wat ons los, die maats wat hulle red in ons draai, dit is wanneer, dit is so mooi, dit is die rechtvaardige oordeel van God, want dit is daai drukking wat maak, dat ons groei, vrug draal, ons blom, <laughs> so ja, dit is net amazing. Ja, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite amazing that um, yesterday Paula uh, sent us a message that her daughter, um, uh, she gave her life to the Lord and she started to speak in tongues two, three days ago yes. from now on, from now backwards. Yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, she's still a teenager and we just praise the Lord that he's working, her heart was so open and sometimes we are, our hearts are so closed. Yes, we close our hearts, we try to <laughs> Uh, um, near. we try to uh, um, figure it out figure it out, make yeah. it technical how yeah. it should work as just to open your heart if you open your heart then the Lord can work and it's so amazing what my wife has just said here in Afrikaans that uh, we live here in the west coast in, uh, Cape, uh, in the western Cape in South Africa if you don't know it and this time of the year, all the, the entire nature, wherever you go, right up to the tallest mountain, is just flowers. This time of year, it's about a month that you can just see flowers in the felt everywhere. It's just flowers. And when the rain comes in, our, uh, in, in this part of the country, our rainy season is in winter, so we get a lot of water. But when the rain comes, um, it feeds the ground, and it starts to... Uh, work in that seeds that's underneath the ground. And the moment when the sun starts uh, uh, start to shine, the seed comes out and eventually the flower comes out. And when the sun is at its hottest, when the sun is shining, the flowers open up. And then it's, it's mm. this immense uh, a view. It, it's it's, it's, it's uh, um, awesome to see it. Everywhere you look, it's just flower. But without the sun, it's impossible. Yeah. Now I'm thinking that the word is also like water. So we are fed from the word. We receive the word. We listen to the word. We hear, read the word. So we are receiving the water all the time. And if there is no sun, the root of all these flowers will rot. Yes. And they will rot away. Yes. If there is too much water. But when the water is there and the sun comes out. Now the sun is also a symbol of... Um, uh, uh, um, tribulation yes. persecution that we receive every day and especially the children in school they have that persecution every single day from their friends from the teachers um, they sit alone they are alone and nobody wants to do anything with them because they are serving the Lord especially if you are on fire for the Lord and then um, that is when the flower opens up yes. and it shows its beauty 
En um, nou sê ek jy terug, toe sê Paula vir my, wow, jy sal nie verstaan wat dit nou gebeur hier by die werk nie. Linde het begint alle praat by haar lessenaar. <laughs> die Heere het nie een saak nie, waar jy jou hart oopmaak op die oomlik, breek die Heere dier. Yes, okay. En dan kan jy ook deurbreek in jou geestelike leven, so dat dan van jezelf af wat sy vrijmoedigheid jy vat in die Heere, hoe jy jou hart oopmaak yes. tegen die Heere. En of dit nou by die werk is, en of dit nou waar is, Die Heere ontmoet waar jy jou hart op maak. Yes, Is dit die mooie blaan te denk nie? Ons kan die Heere nie beperk met, Heere, ek moet nou eers werk en ek moet nou dit en ek moet nou dat nie. Op die oomlik wat jy jou hart oorbreek, Ek bedoel, Godse geest is in jou hart, as jy kind van die Heere is, is in jou hart en uitgestort. So as jy oopmaak, is dit daar, yes, <laughs> dan breek jy die Heer. <clears throat> so dit is net mooi om aan te denk, en dit is net amazing om te hoor, die terugvoer, en ons sê vir mekaar, ons hoor net die goedheid van die Heere. Yes. Ons wil net getuig daarvan, ons wil yes, het net amen. uitdra aan allemaal, want die Heere werk soos hy wil. Yes, die amen. mens is nie eers meer nodig, die Godse geest is daar om te werk. Yes. En hy het al so'n mooi fondatie geleerd, dat allemaal kan deurbreek en vrijmoedigheid kan hy in die woord en sekerheid in die woord kan hy, want as my sekerheid in die woord het, dan breek jy dier. Wow. Yeah, and if we can present the gospel in a, a joyful manner and a, a hopeful manner, then people around us open their hearts. And this is what also Paula did, as especially the work. Sometimes they say, she says she's talking more about the Lord than the, the work. Then she must catch up with her work. And that attracts people. It will uh, push some away. But the one whose heart is open yes. will receive. And when they receive, and also Lindy Nell at Paula's work, at the desk while she was working, Yes. The next moment she started talking in tongues as well. She was born again, and the next moment she started talking mm -hmm. in tongues. Thanks, she was encouraged to do it. Thanks, and we yeah. just praise the Lord. When she opened her heart right at her yes. desk, just there, started talking in tongues. So we just praise the Lord. It's like revival there in Alberton and in Joburg <laughs> South. Lindy Nell is staying where we used to stay in jo Johannesburg, Joburg South. So we are so excited to know that he are children of the law there as well. Oh, man, praise the Heere. It's so nice to learn the word of the word of the word. And Paula said, no, 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 we can now for God and stand in the of you, so you can talk to us. So it's so amazing. All of us begin our nice word of the word. It's not so amazing to hear. And to hear the word of the word of the word. And to hear the word of the word of the word. And to hear the word of the word. Dan sê met die karin, speel het vol. <laughs> so ja, dit is net amazing. Amal is al die lekke sekerheid en ons breek net dier en dier. En as die heren so lekker neerbreek in jou waar, dan kan jy weer aan nou help. Ja, yeah, and today when you hear that, uh, this testimony is, don't close your heart, but say, Lord, um, I've, I've neglected the speaking of tongues, I've neglected your joy uh, uh, in my life, and from today I want to open up again. Because this is the thing of, when a new a new uh, people come into the into the fold uh, are born again that fresh testimony that oh, testimony man. that that you can see lord i used to be there and something happened in my way and i've become maybe lukewarm or just mm -hmm. chilled down a little bit let us use it as an encouragement oh, to say lord man. i'm going to do more i'm going to seek thee more i'm going to practice again i'm going to uh, uh, exercise the gifts one again, mm -hmm. once again that I have in my life. Because if we don't, if we don't exercise and practice the one gift that we have, yes. and use it and work with it, we won't be, uh, we won't receive more from the Lord. Oh. And this is the thing we must understand that as well. If you practice the one thing, it grows to the next thing spontaneously. You yes. don't even have to think about it. It is like a child growing up, just spontaneously. He's getting, he, he develops, his brain develops, his surrounding develops, his knowledge develops. It's a natural process. And in the spiritual world as well, sometimes we are so focused being mature that we forget to walk the path. Yeah. And, it, and we develop spiritually, naturally. Yes, amen. Yes, oh, amen. Praise <laughs> so praise the name of the Lord. Now this morning we want to talk about a very, very, very popular portion of scripture this is really just a portion yes. by whose stripes you were healed now it is in the new testament a scripture like this and obviously the prophetical 
utterance in the Old Testament that we're going to look at to it as well and both in its context. Ja, so ons gaan volgend kyk na um, die skrif wat sê, Deer sy wonde is ons genees. Nou, um, dit staan hier in 1 Petrus 2 vers um, 34, en natuurlijk trouwens is die oud testamentiese skrif, 24. Ek, ach, het ek 34 of toch? Voor ongeluk is, ja. ja. Maar anyway, en dan staan het ook in um, Jesaja 53, so ons gaan dan al twee lekker die skrifte bespreek, en so bykie daarna kyk, want is die profetiese woord in Jesaja, en dan sien ons het ook in die Nieuwe Testament, wat Petrus van praat. Nou, ons gebruik hierdie skrif, in hierdie gedeelte, geweldig baie, vir, vir lichamelike geneesing. Baie keer as mense bid, dan hoor ons, dat hulle sal sê, dier die wonde is daar vir ons geneesing. En hoe moet ons hierdie saak verstaan? Want onthou net, wanneer die mens ook verkeerd bid, gaan nou niks gebeur nie. Jy kan nie hierdie saak gebruik, en vir een vreselike geneesing bid nie, dit gaan nie werk nie. So ons moet iets verstaan in die woordheid, want onthou, ja, die, die geneesing in jou lichaam kan deurbreek, nou probleem, die Heere kan jou gezond maak, maar dit is een gave van geneesing. Yes. En dit is so mooi om aan te denk, so ons moet verstaan wat in die woord van die Heere aangaan, nou, toe ons na hierdie skrif so mooi weer deurlees, en ek besef dat, hoeveel mense is onkindig oor hierdie skrif, en wat hierdie skrif eindelijk vir ons sê. Yes. So dit is net een weising, ons gaan altyd hierdie gedeelte so lekker deurpraat, en so bykie bespreek, en dan gaan jy so ook lekker um, klarigheid kry, duidelijkheid kry, ja, duidelijk, oor hierdie skrif, loof die Heere. Ja, yeah, so when you, when we read the scripture, I want you to think, and if you can, just give us a comment there as well, what do you think the scripture really means? Um, as we are reading through it, you can, Get your thoughts together and maybe if you can type, give, please give us a comment here on Facebook because the, the, the emphasis are placed on by stripes you were, were healed. So why aren't you healed? Yeah. So uh, in Afrikaans praat hy die wonde is jylle genees. So dis asof dit moes al gebeur het. Yeah. So let us see what is the context of this scripture and we're going to read first in 1 Peter 2. And we're going to read from verse 21 to 25. But obviously the main scripture are verse 24. So we're going to read 1 Peter 2 verses 21 to 25. For this, uh, for to this you were called. Because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. Now this is, this is an encouragement for Christian people, for born again believers, not for the world, and we must understand it as such. Who committed no sin, nor was the seed found in his mouth, that is very important. Who when he was reviled, did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but committed himself to him who judged righteously. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that's on the cross, that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. For you were like sheep going astray, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. So we're going to read the scripture in Afrikaans, and then we're going to break it down and just talk about it. So in 1 Peter 2 vers 21 sê hy, want hiertoe is jylle geroep, <coughs> omdat Christus ook vir jylle gelei het, en jylle een voorbeeld nagelaat het, <coughs> so dat jylle sy voetstap, voetstappe kan navolg. Hy wat geen sonde gedoen het nie, en in wie sy mond geen bedrog gevind is nie, wat toe hy uitgeskel is nie, terug uitgeskel het nie. Tjo, dit is, dit is my blauwie. Toe hy gelei het nie, gedreig het nie, maar dit oorgegee het aan hom, wat rechtvaardig oordeel. Net om aan hierdie skrif te denk, is al klaas vir so wel. Wat self ons sonde in sy lichaam op die kruishout gedra het, so dat ons die sondes kan afsterwe en vir die gerechtigheid lewe, dier wie sy wonde jylle genees is, want jylle was soos dwalende skape, maar nou het jylle teruggekeer na die, opperher, ach, na die herder en opsiener van jylle siele. Ja, so here we see quite a few uh, interesting aspects in this uh, scripture, but the, the complete fulfillment of it we can find in, in Isaiah 50, 53 that we're going to read now as well. Um, uh, I'm just looking at some of the comments here. In wanneer ons weer gebore is, mag ons elke dag belei en geneesing vergifnis 
is en sondes ontvang. Ja, de Boer sê, gereed genees van ons sondes, wanneer ons Jesus Christus aanneem. Ons is allemaal zonnige mense, eindelijk siek mense en Jesus' bloed het gevloeid, zodat so ons ziele kan leven. Dan is ons genees en wanneer ons geboren is, mag ons elke dag belei en genees en vergifnis van sondes ontvang. Ja, so the two comments we have here, they say it's all about sin. It's not just necessary about the earthly. And, and, and I think this is also the problem um, when um, we want to uh, um, see the scripture only as a physical healing. Then we want to um, portray physical sickness as sin. And we yeah. do find that preaching in a, in, a, in a Christian church. Yeah, so as we said, we'll see that dat hierdie oor lichamelike geneesing gaan, dan raak dit ook een doktrine, dat um, so, sonde, of, um, siekte is als gevolg van zonde. So dit krijg ons baie in die christelike kerk, dat um, dit is eigenlijk maar een algemene opvatting, dat um, siekte in die lichaam kom door zonde. Yes. Nou dit is, dit is um, as mens dit so dan al kyk, dan, dan gaan het sin maak, maar daar is toch een verwarring. So mens moet een mooi verstaan, om te kan verstaan, waar die somme waar waar gaan hierdie gedeelte. Yeah, that's why a lot of people becomes despondent because now you are ill, maybe you've got a chronic sickness or illness, and then it's preached in such a way that you feel guilty. You are this uh, sinful, person. sinful person, and why doesn't the Lord forgive you? And that's why sometimes we live under condemnation. Yeah, because we hear this kind of preaching that sin is sickness and sickness is sin, and then this scripture is quoted, but there are so many ill people in the world, even truly upright uh, Christians, born again believers, then they live under a condemnation. Yeah. And there's a certain thing that we must understand from the scripture so that we can come out under that condemnation. Yeah, so by the way, as we see type of scripture gebruik om te say that sickness comes here as a result of sin, dan lewe mense onder een geweldige skuldgevoel, want hulle voel ons nooit vir vergifnis nie. Yes. Hoekom bly ek dan siek? Baie mense is ek het kroniese siektes. So dan voel hulle maar ek moet seker vir ever sondag en God vergewe my nooit nie. Yes. So dit is hoekom ek onder die siekte bly. En dit veroorzaak die geweldige skuldgevoel in die mens. En het is alsof jy nooit vrede in die Heere kan kry nie. En nooit verder kan aangaan nie. Want jy bly by dit. So we want to talk about this um, uh, uh, so when we look at the scripture, we see it's about sin, um, that Jesus bore our sins, that he died, that we must also die towards the sin. Um, we are healed by his stripes, and also we are like sheep that went astray, and that we've returned to the overseers of our soul. Of our soul. So this is important. What is your soul? Your soul is your spiritual man, it's your spiritual body, and within your soul is your heart as well. So we can see here, it's all about spiritual things. It's yeah. not about the natural. And when we look at sin, what is sin? sin? And we think also sin is most of the time just what we are doing outwardly. Yeah. But sin has its origin within the heart. Now if sin can be broken, the power of sin in our hearts then our soul can be free, and so we can be healed spiritually as well. Yes. So ons lees hier, so dat Jesus vir ons gesterf het, so dat ons, dat ons ons sonde kan afstart, en vir die gerechtigheid lewe. So ons sien net dat hierdie hele gedeelte gaan oor die sonde wat afgesterf moet word. Jesus wat vir ons sonde kom sterf het, so dat ons gezond kan word, en ons siel. Want onthou net, as jy mens sonde doen, gaan dit nie net oor die uiterlijke daad van sonde nie. Die sonde was al reeds in die hart, in die siel, want ons praat nou hier van die siel, nie? dit is nou die innerlijke mens van jou, die innerlijke, die geestelijke lichaam van jou, waarin jou hart gesetel is. So, wat nou hier gebeur is, as, jou, uh, as die sonde daar um, vrug dra, gaan jy uiterlijke dade begin doen. So, wat hier gebeur het, Jesus het vir ons kom sterf, hy het um, die, die kracht van sonde oor ons kom verbreek, ons het dood gegaan vir die sonde, Yes. Nou kan ons die sonde afsterf, yes. maar voor dit nie gebeur nie, sal jy nooit sonde kan afsterf nie. Yes. Maar ons het ook nou mooi onthou hier, van hierdie skrif, en dit is altyd die probleem, denk ek, as ons as kinders van die Wanneer ons in die Nieuwe Testament lees, moet ons verstaan, dat daar word gepraat met kinders van die Heere. Yes. Ons wil dit nooit in die oogheid verloor nie. Die Bijbel in die, in die Nieuwe Testament is nie geskryf vir die sonde nie. 
Want hij gaat het in elk geval niet eens verstaan. Nie. En wanneer een mens kan verstaan dat die Nieuwe Testament is geschreven voor die kind van die Jere, jij waar die Jere Jezus Christus aangeneem het in de wedergeboorte, waar die geest van God ontvang het, dan maak het zo'n so beetje een ander printje, want anders yes. wil het altijd terugvat naar die zon daar toe. Yes. Dit gaan oor kinders van die Heere wat hulle hart opgebrek het, want hy sê, ons was sonder een herder, maar ons siele het teruggekeer na op een herder. Yes. So ons was verloren, ons was um, weg van die Heere afgewees, maar nou als gevolg van die feit dat Jezus voor ons komt sterf het, die kracht van sonde waar ons verbreek het, so dat ons het kan afsterf, kon ons terugkeer naar ons opperherder, ons ziel kon gezond worden, ons ziel kon gereed worden, zodat so ons nou een opperherder kan hee oor ons ziel. Ja, yeah, of Jesus Christ even said in, a, in one instance, if you have a, if there is something that makes you to struggle, cut it off. It's better to go, in, to, go to eternal life with a maimed and a, 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 a sick body than to have a healthy body, a perfect body, and yeah. that your soul are lost forever. So Jesus Christ always placed emphasis on the soul, on the inward man. Ja, so hy sê dat hy die lichaam eerder uiterlijk vergaan, waar hy die siel gereek kan word. So Jesus het altyd die um, klem gelee op die geestelike. Yes. Nooit op die lichamelike lichaam van ons nie. Want as het daar oor gaan, is ons soos goed wat hy aan vergaan. Yes. Maar as ons kan verstaan, het gaan oor ons siel, oor ons innerlijke, dan kan ons krachtig weerbreek in die Heere. Yes, so let us go and uh, let's have a look at Isaiah 53, that um, most of what Peter wrote here comes directly from Isaiah 53. And obviously Isaiah 53 is a prophetic word that elaborates on a lot of things on the physical and on the spiritual. And we're going to do a, a, a scripture in Psalm 22 as well that also talks about the physical and the spiritual. And we tend to forget the spiritual, what really happened. Because cause Jesus Christ were in anguish, not because of his physical, but of the spiritual. Yeah. And he, he knew if he couldn't, if he couldn't overcome the uh, spiritual, he wouldn't overcome the physical. Yeah. He knew that. And that was his struggle to overcome spiritually inward. And doesn't matter what happened to his body. Yeah. So Jesus said, um, besef that I, he besef me. Um, dit, was, dit, was, dit was erg gewees, ek bedoel die hele dood van Jesus het gegaan oor dit wat geestelik moest gebeur, yes. nie net oor sy lichaam nie, want as hy daar gegaan het, was dit nie um, dit was baie erg dit, ons kan nie sê, dit was nie erg nie, maar dit is nie waar dit gegaan het nie, yes. hy het geweet hy moet in die um, geest moet hy oorwin, yes. in die siel moet hy oorwin want anders kon hy ons nie los kry nie, anders kon hy ons nie vry kry nie so dit het nie net gegaan oor die wonde wat hy in die lichaam ontvang het nie. Yes. Waar het hy die wonde ontvang? Wat het met hom gebeur? Wat sy druk was daar op Jesus gewees um, met sy sterfting? Dat ons dit kan verstaan, dat ons kan verstaan hoekom het hy daar deurgegaan yes. so dat ons siele kan loskom. Dit was die belangrijkste deel van alles geweest. want ons was in die gevangenis geweest met die duivel, hy het die macht oor ons siel gehad. Dit is ook om ons siel siek was en ons onder die kracht van zonde was. En toe Jesus kom, toe moes hy al hierdie dinge losmaak en vrymaak in die geestelike wereld, so dat ons siel kan loskom en vrykom. Yes, because when we look at, uh, Jessica, uh, if we jump back quickly to 1 Peter 2 again, he said when when he was reviled, he didn't revile. In other words, he didn't retaliate. He didn't lash back with words. He didn't hit back with yeah. words. And we yeah, yeah, we can see the the main onslaught against Jesus Christ. And when we, uh, uh, if you have already read uh, the New Testament, the Gospels, you can see that there was a, a, um, a, a, a how can I say, an uploop. There, there was a preparation yes. and a path to Jesus Christ's death. And it was this words that came all the time against him. This accusations that came all the time. This false accusations that came all the time. That hit him spiritually. Yeah. And he knew he cannot at that moment when sure. all that accusations came to him. He cannot lash back at him. He cannot hit back at him. Otherwise... He won't be able to overcome because when he lashed back at them, when he would have lashed back at them, he would have defended himself. Yeah. 
and he never defended himself. And this is a and, th and this is what it says. Christ l left us an example. Yeah. And this is a big thing. I, I, I see even in my own life. One tend to lash back. One tend to defend yourself with words. When words come back to you and it uh, uh, um, and this false accusations comes against you, you want to lash back. You want to defend yourself. And Jesus didn't do that. And he knew that is where he had to overcome. Yeah. <coughs> So hy sê so, want hy het nie uitgeskel nie, um, toe hy uitgeskel is, het hy nie terug uitgeskel nie. Toe hy geleid, het hy nie, ged um, het hy nie gedreig nie, maar het oorgegee aan hom wat rechtvaardig oordeel. So Jesus het homself glad nie verdedig nie. Hy het nie sy mond opgemaak en met hulle teruggeveg nie, of met hulle teruggepraat nie. Nou dit is um, baie keer die, 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 die ding wat ons in ons leven het. So dra daar een beskuldiging kom, of enig iets aan ons kan te kom, of woorde aan ons kan te kom, dan wil jy jouself verdedig. Jy wil... Um, terugpraat, jy wil hierdie ding probeer uitsorteer met jou eie woorde, en dit is wat Jesus, hy sê, hy het vir ons die voorbeeld kom stel, om dit nie te doen nie, maar hy het dit, wat met hom gebeur het, het hy gegeen aan die vader, wat rechtvaardig oordeel, so, as ons net daarna kyk in ons eie lewe, gee ons baie keer alles oor vir die vader, so dat hy rechtvaardig oordeel, of veg ons terug, begin ons in die geveg ingaan, en dan kry ons in elke geval seer, Nou, dit is so mooi om aan te denk dat dis al die woorde en dinge wat jy in Jesus gekom het, wat hierdie geweldige kracht in hom was. Um, ons kan nie altyd verstaan wat dit was nie en dat hy kon stil bly. Om net te kan stil bly, is dus a wow. Ja, yeah, because the fact that Jesus kept silent um, and didn't lash back, yeah. he gave it over to the Father who judges righteously. Yeah. But he was silent in his heart. Hart as well. Yes. Ja, dit help nie jou hart veg, en jou kop veg, en jy bly maar net stil met jou mond nie. Want onthou nie, dis die innerlijke wat moet stil wees, dis die innerlijke wat nie moet terug veg nie. So zodra jy in die geveg raak, dan is dit jou innerlijke wat al klaar opgehits is. Jy en jou siel en jou innerlijke. En Jesus het vir ons kom leer, dat hy het nie eers in sy siel opgehits geraak nie. And when we look at Jesus Christ's entire um, uh, um, ministry life, he often had this lashes of words against him. Yeah. And in so many times, they, when he were um, tempted and lashed out against, they come with him with the word of God, the Old Testament word, which is also the sword. And so they attacked him yeah. with so the word. Yeah, the devil also attacked him yeah. with the word. They used the sword, yeah. the word of God, to attack Jesus. So hulle het al altyd die woord gebruik om vir Jesus aan te val. Die duivel het mense opgehits met woorde, so dat hulle altyd vir Jesus kom aanval het. Ja, yeah, of course, three and a half years was a road leading up to the crucifixion. That was the word I was looking for. Leading up, and he had to keep silent in his heart, and yeah. he knew when he over, will overcome this, then the, whatever physically will happen to him will be nothing, yeah. compared to the spiritual. Ja, so as hy dit in die geestelike oorwin, dan kan hy dit deerdruk in die tydelike nie, in die lichaam. Want die, in die, wat in die geestelike gebeur, is baie erger, as wat baie keer met die lichaam gebeur. Ja, yeah, cause when we also read in Isaiah 53, we're going to do the whole portion of scripture, but just to emphasize verse 7, where he says, he was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not sure. his mouth. So verse 7 tells us, and this, this confirms what, Peter said that the, the, when Jesus Christ were, were in front of his accusations, first of all on a daily basis, and obviously at the end of his life, it all came uh, in like a nutshell to him. It came in a compressed form to him. And he didn't open up his mouth. He didn't defend himself. Sure. But he went as a lamb to the slaughter, mm. and a sheep before its shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. Even, remember, uh, Pilate was stunned when he said, when he realized, but Jesus did, uh, has no desire to defend himself. Sure. Now, as this in verse 7, he is mishandled, although he was born, and he had his mouth not opened, and he was like a lamb that is on the side of the side, and he was like a lamb that is on the side of the side, and he was like a lamb that is on the side of the side. Yes, he had his mouth not opened. So he had not opened himself. Even Pilate had opened, 
het, was, was, was vir hom interessant dat Jesus homself nie vergerig het. Ja. So, want hy het sy mond nie oopgemaak nie, hy het gehoorzaam gedoen wat hy moest doen, want hy het geweet wat in die geestelike wereld moest plaas vind. Vir hom het nie gegaan oor die aardse wereld en hy moet hom nou self verdedig met woorde nie. Hy moest in die geestelike wereld iets oorwin. Ja, Paula, you are absolutely right. He did not even sin in his thoughts. Ja. Just to think of that. Ja. He never had one hateful thought. Because what happens, um, remember words that are driven from your heart, especially hate, hateful words, are destructive. But the destruction already starts inwardly. Okay? And this is why Jesus Christ said that um, murder and sin and all that kind of stuff, all evil things, adulterers and uh, evil thoughts, proceeds from the heart. Yes, and we can be a murderer without ever physically murder somebody. Ja, so as jy in jou hart iemand haat, is jou klare moordenaar. So dit wat in jou hart al reeds is, um, is wat jy is. Yes. Dit gaan op een stadium manifesteer. Ja, yeah, of course, the hate that the Jewish leaders had against Jesus eventually came out in words, yeah. and then it escalated to the physical death. Eventually yeah. it became the physical. Ja, so dit het eerst uitgekom in woorde, daar had het eerst uitgekom in woorde, en toe um, het hulle om visies ook mishandel. Ja, yeah, so that stripes that Jesus Christ received, that 1 Peter 2 is talking about is the spiritual, yeah. the inward stuff, the lashes of words, that sharp words that came to him um, during his lifetime and also at his crucifixion. Sure. So let us read Isaiah, and we're going to read uh, Isaiah 53 from verses 3 or verses 4. Mine is from verse 3. Okay, let's, let's read from verse 3. Um, he is despised and rejected by many, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid as uh, and we hid as were our faces from him. He was despised and we did not esteem him. Mm. Now, obviously, this was a prophetic word. Our people turned their backs yeah. backs against Jesus, and we know that even his his, his own apostles at the end of the day also turned their back against Jesus. Ah. And if you want to read this two scriptures, and then we... Ja, hy was veracht en dier die mense verlaat. Een man van smart en bekend met krankheid. Ja, soos een vir wie mense gelaat verberg. Hy was veracht en ons het om nie geacht nie. Nogtans het hy, daar in die toek nie, nogtans het hy ons krankheer op hom geneem en ons smarte, die het hy gedra, maar ons het om gehou vir een wat geplaag, dier God geslaan en verdruk is. So die eerste vers sê vir ons dat, allemaal het hom verlaat, oh, niemand het hom geacht nie, selfs sy disciples het op een stadium hulle rug tegen Jesus gedraai, yes. hulle was nie eers mee saam met jy, hulle het hom verloor, en hulle het, en Petrus het gesê, nee, maar ek ken hom nie, nee, ek weet nie waarvan jy praat nie, yes. ek was nie saam met die man nie, so, da, hulle het hulle rug tegen hom gedraai, toe hulle sien wat actually met hom gebeur. So, sure. now when we read verse 4, I think verse 4, you've already read verse yeah. 4, um, surely he has borne our griefs, and carried our sorrows, yet, we esteem them stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. When we see the word stricken in the English Bible, it's, it, it, it talks about being plagued. So Jesus were plagued. With what were he plagued? He were plagued with, plagued with these words, these accusations that came against him, these hateful accusations. Because when we read in James 3 as well, he talks about how our words can set the world on fire. En dit kom en ons woorde word daar die hel uit aangesteek. Yes, <laughs> ja, yes. Dit is nogal erg om daar te denk. So hierdie woorde was hier tegen Jesus gewees. En hy sê, um, gehou vir een wat geplaag is. Daai woorde het tegen Jesus gekom die hele tyd. En um, daai valse beskuldigings en al die dinge. So dit, dit was geweldig gewees in sy siel. Yes. Hy het aangehoor, dit was heel tyd in sy siel. Dit was yes. heel tyd die aanslag in sy siel gewees. Om in te gee, om toe te gee, om terug te vaag. Yes. Maar hy het nie. Ja, yeah, because before the physical death came, he already endured so many afflictions, yeah. so many rejections, so many cursings, all his entire life, 
That was even before the physical death, although he knew that would also come and that also must happen. Yes. Now let us read from verse 5. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Now this is the way we can remember what Peter quoted as well. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of, uh, of us all. So we can see here it's clearly about the spiritual because we were like sheep it is not the outward that went astray it's the inward the soul that are astray and the soul must come back yeah. to its shepherd and jesus christ says he is the shepherd we are like the sheep and we must return to him now all the affliction all the trouble all the plagues and the plagues is the plagues of sin and of unrighteousness he took it upon him, on his soul, in his spiritual body, so that he can overcome it on our behalf and that we can become free and be healed once again. Because remember, the devil destroys us. Sin makes us sick. Sin, uh, um, uh, um, uh, 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 Marcusia. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, sin hurts our inner man, our soul. Words hit, uh, 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 I mean, words can uh, hurt more than outward actions. And this is what Jesus received. And this is, and, and rem we must remember, Satan is also a spiritual being. Yeah. And Satan attacked him spiritually through a lot of people around him. And he knew, and he took that on him so that we can be set free and be healed through Jesus Christ. Kom sê, sê in Jesaja 53 vers 5. Maar hy is terwille van ons oortredinge deerboer, terwille van ons ongerechtig hier in sy verbrysel. Die straf wat vir ons die vrede aanbring, was op hom, en dier sy wonde hy daar vir ons geneesing gekom. Ons allemaal het gedwaal so skapen, ons het ons eie pad geloop, maar die Heere het die ongerechtigheid van ons allemaal op hom laat neerkom. So hier kan ons al klaar sê nie, dit gaan oor ongerechtigheid, dit gaan oor Um, ons wat gedwaal het, waar ons ongerechtigheid en um, de ons oortredinge het om deurboor. So wat hier gebeur het, dit was een geestelijke ja. saak geweest. Dit het nie gegaan oor hier, oor een fysische lichaam nie. Yes. Hy moes al die pla, dit, dit, dit was nou myne van die pla nie, daar was al, ja, vers 4. wat hy sê, ja, vers 4. Um, maar ons het omgehou vir een wat geplaag, dier God gestaan en verdrek is. So hy het die plaag van sonde, moes hy um, op hom neem, in sy siel, Yes. Nie op aarde nie, in sy siel, yes. moes hy al hierdie goed oorwin. Hy kon aan niks toegee nie, aan geen woord, aan geen beskuldiging, aan niks. Hy kon nie so bykie haat en gedachte. Nou ek denk baie keer as ons moes nou so bykie vals beskuldig word. Jo, kijk jou gedagtes hardloop nie. Daar is soveel yes, dinge wat in jou gedagtes deerkom. Amen op die oomlik van hoe jy jouself wil verdedig en wat jy wil sê en wat jy nou vir die persoon wil sê en baie keer is het haat gedagtes en bitterheid gedagtes en alles. Jesus kon niks, 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 niks toelaat nie. Want hy moes in die geestelike wereld moes hy oorwin. Yes. En hy kon nie die duivel oorwin met die geringste verkeerde gedagte, emotie, yes. enige iets in sy binneste nie, in sy siel nie. Yes. So hier kan ons al klaar sê nie, hier gaan het oor een geestelike saak waarvan ons verlossing moet kry. Want ons wil skape wat rond gedwaal het, wat geen herder gehad het, en ons mis terugkom na ons herder toe. Yes. So in die oud testament, kon hulle nie by die herder uitkom nie. Hulle kon nie by, by hom, um, hy, hulle kon nie hulle siel aan hom toe vertrouw nie. Yes. So hulle was verloren gewees, en as ons dit nog klaar kan verstaan, dan besef een mens, maar joh, hierdie gaan nie oor een fysische wonde, en fysische geneesing nie. Yes. Hier moes iets innerlik gebeur. Yes, and now let's continue from verse 7. It's, it will become quite interesting from this point onward. Um, is there some uh, um, commentaries that we can... Um, vandag verstaan ek iets, toe ek sonar was, het ek myself om elke hoek en draai verdedig, as ek met woorde toegesna was, maar nou, dat ek weer gebore is, en met woorde seer gemaakt word, is dit um, nogals baie seer, en wanneer ek myself klaar verdedig het, voel ek so slecht, omdat ek nie eerder stil gebleid nie, en het yes, is so, yes. mens voel so, 
Wow, this is amazing. And the fleas here on us up to stand for ourselves. That is so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Praise the Lord. Jesus said the devil over the wind. Um, yeah, even Jesus Christ said that um, in the world they rule with harshness and they dominate over each other. But amongst you, it must not be so. Yeah. The one must be the servant of the other one. Yeah, but I still scope it. Yes. Okay, so let's continue reading and from verse 7. We're going to read till verse 9. He was oppressed and he was afflicted. He, yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to be slaughtered, as a sheep before the shearers is silent. So he opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living. This is quite <laughs> amazing when I talk about this. For the transgression of my people he was stricken. And they made his grave with the wicked, but with the rich at, uh, at his death. Because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Mm -hmm. So first of all, he was cut off from the land of the living. Yeah. So it, was, it wasn't just about the earthly. Because Jesus Christ knew he's going to uh, be raised from the dead. So he's going to live once again. He was cut off from the land of the living. Now, when Jesus Christ was crucified and he died, his soul went down to Hades, went down to, to hell, to Satan's kingdom, to go and release all those that were captured under the Old Testament law. And uh, Satan held them uh, a captive in darkness because there were, were no redeemer for them. Because nobody in the Old Testament, it doesn't matter... It didn't matter how righteous I tried to live. Of course, from the, you cannot be saved from the law. There's no law that can make us so righteous. Not even one law that we can, can quote or adhere to that can uh, save us from eternal damnation, from hell, from the place of darkness. Now, Jesus Christ, when he died, he was cut off from the land of the living. While he was on earth, he lived through faith like we are living through faith. But at his death, he first went into hell, into Hades, into darkness to release those souls. And now faith in his name now releases us from that kingdom of darkness. So he was cut off so that we can be brought over from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. So as this here first year, I is my handle. Hoewel hy onderworpen was en hy het sy mond nie oopgemaak nie soos een lam wat na die slagplek gelei word, nie soos een skaap wat stom is voor sy skeerders, ja, het hy sy mond nie oopgemaak nie. Hy die druk en hy die strafgerig is hy weggeneem en onder sy tydgenote. Wie het daardoor gedink, dit het my nog een baie getref, dat ek het nou so lees, wie het daardoor gedink dat hy afgesnui is uit die land van die leven is? En terwille van die oortredinge van my volk was die plaag op hom. So wat gebeur het op die oomlik? Ek bedoel, um, dit is wat die woord ook sê, jy sal uit die land van die levenis uitgehaal word. Nee? So, yes. Jesus was rechtvaardig. Yes. Jesus het nie sonde gehad nie. Jesus was in die leven van God gewees. Amen. <laughs> hy het in die kracht van God gelewe. Amen. Maar vir een oomlik moes hy dit verlaat. Vir een oomlik moes hy die helen afsak om die siele daar los te kry. So vir een oomlik is hy in die land van die levendes uitgehaal, hy moes in die doodreik ingaan, om die siele daar los te kry, so dat hy ook gered kon word, en vry kon kom. So hy moes vir een oomlik sy siel gee. Jo, as jy daar aan denk, dat ons kon loskom, dat hy ons kon vry koop. Nou, as hy enigsins enige sonde, gedoen het voor die tyd, sou hy nie uit die dode reik kon uitkom nie. Hy sou vastgevang gewees het daar. Hy sou heel te mal uit die land van die leven is uitgehaal geword het en ons sou nooit in ons leven gered kon word nie. Nou verstaan ons die druk wat op Jesus was. Hy moes sy siel in die dode reik verlaat. Ja. Dit is krikwekkend. Yes, now let us continue reading from verse 10 that will clarify the entire fact that Jesus Christ came to deliver our souls. Now let us read from verse 10 and we're going to read until verse 12 and then we're going to explain it. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief when you make his soul an offering for sin. Mm. So it wasn't just about his body. Yeah. His soul was an offering for sin. 
Now, Jesus Christ teaches us in Matthew 15. You can go and read. I, 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 I had the reference uh, verses here. Go and read Matthew 15 from 17 to 19. And then also Mark 7 from verse 18 to 23. Mark 7 from verse 18 to 23. Where Jesus explained sin comes from within the heart. Mm. So... And in your heart is in your, it's not a, this physical heart. It is the inward heart, the heart in the soul. That is where the origin of sin lies. And that is Jesus Christ came to as an offering for sin. In other words, so that your inward man, your heart can be released and cut off from that power of sin. And let us continue reading from verse 10. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied by the knowledge my righteous servant shall justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Iniquities is sin. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. So here we see Jesus Christ poured out his soul mm. for our sin, because sin is spiritual in nature. Yeah. Because the power of sin in our hearts are so strong. It eventually manifests first in words, as James says, we all sin. And where we sin the most is in our words. Mm. And eventually our words will become actions if it's not rooted out in the heart. So that mm. is what it meant. Jesus, two thousand, almost 2,000 years ago, died for our sins so that we can also die. So 2,000 years ago, by his stripes we were healed he came and made an end to the power of sin in our lives Sal hy een nakroos sien. That's us, he? Eh? Ja. <laughs> hy sal die daal verleng en die welbehaal van die Heere sal dier sy hand voorspoedig wees. Nou, dit is my so mooi om aan te denk. Hy moes sy siel as een skuldoffer aanbied. Yes. So dat hy een nakroos kon sien. So hy moes sy siel uitstort en yes. het gee vir een offer so dat ons gered kon word. Wow, Want onthou dit in die oud testament was daar geen skuldvergifnis gewees nie. Dit hulle was maar in bewaring gehou. Hulle kon die bokke en stiere en al die dinge kon hulle offer. Maar daar was nie offer wat hulle kon losmaak en vrymaak nie. En Jesus moes in die doodreik in gaan en hy moes sy siel as een skuldoffer gee so dat ons die, 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 die um, skuldoffer kan aangeneem het en sy kind raak, en ons sonde belei, en loskom, en vrykom, so dis hoe kom hy ons skuldoffer kom word het, so dat yes. ons kan loskom van sonde, Amen. so hy het nou vir altyd die skuldoffer, yes. hy is altyd die skuldoffer, nou weet, ons kan aan die vader toe gaan, en ons kan kom loskom, ons siele kan kom loskom van sonde, en ongerechtigheid en dinge, ja, yeah, because Jesus Christ is the mediator for sin, until today, yes, yes. so hy is die middelaar, so hy moet daar gewees het, en hy moet sy siel uitstort, so dat ons hom kon aanneem, so dat ons kon loskom yes. van sonde, want dat daar nie, sonde is een geestelike saak. Yes. Dit gebeur eers in die hart, in die, in die sielse hart, is die sonde eers daar. Dan manifesteer het uiterlik. En Jesus het gekom om die sonde in ons siel los te maak, om ons dood, dat ons kan doodraak vir die sonde. Yes. Dit is net awesome, ons gaan nou nog by al die lekker punte uitkom, so ons gaan dit net so vinnig hier deur noem. Wees die moeitevolle leider van sy siel, het hy dit gesien en versadig geword, dier sy kennis sal my knecht die rechtvaardige, baie rechtvaardig maak, en hy sal hulle skuld dra. Daarom sal ek om een deelgie onder die groot is, en met machtige sal hy buit verdeel, omdat hy sy siel uitgestort het in die dood. Dis die skuld. En saam met die oortreders getel was, 
terwijl hij toch die zonde van baie gedra en vir die oortreders gebid het. So Jesus het sy siel vir ons uitgestort in die dood, so dat ons verlossing kan kry. Ja, uh, just to mention it here quickly as a side note, uh, that he says Jesus made intercession, he prayed for everybody. Now in John 17 is an um, amazing prayer of Jesus. The entire John 17 is a prayer. And he said, and he said in his prayer, Lord, I'm just, just praying for them. But for everybody will, that will believe through the words, the gospel that they're going to preach. So, I, so he said, I didn't preach, uh, pray, I, I don't even pray for uh, apostles, but I pray for everybody that will believe uh, their words. Yes. <laughs> this is an van Jesus. This is amazing. Yeah, so if never, if never, uh, if no one has ever prayed for you, Jesus Christ prayed for you. Yeah. Wow, is that isn't it that amazing? Yeah, so That's, Jesus is for us in Johannes 17 gebed. And he has for every one gebed, not for the apostles, not for every one who will come. He has gebed to the end. So yeah. that's it, for the Lord in the Kroos. And he has the skuld offer given so that we in the Kroos can be. So he has for us gebed. He has for us Elke een gebed wat die Heere Jesus Christus aangeneem het. Ja. Now, if you just go back quickly, just to the one portion of... Hallo Susan, moore Susan. The one part of uh, verse uh, in 1 Peter, 1 verse 24, say, by whose stripes you were healed. Hmm. Now, that is past. You were healed. Now, now, this is what... Now, Jesus Christ came to, and He took all the sin upon Him. The lashes, the plagues of sin. He took on his soul. He offered that. He, he made a sacrifice. Uh, um, he, he sacrificed his, his soul. soul. That And all the lashes and the plagues that were on sin were on him. And when he died, it was like burning a physical because uh, in the Old Testament they sacrificed physical animals. And when that animal was burned up, the sin was gone. The transgression was gone. Symbolically. Although it never really happened. That was only a prophetical action. So the moment when Jesus Christ died. Sin died. And what actually died. But now you can say. But I'm still sinning. All, even if I have uh, received Jesus Christ. Okay. Now when we read in 1 Corinthians 15. Verses 56. And this is what he said. The power of sin. Where does the power of sin comes from? Hmm. And this is what Jesus Christ, that's why the word of God says, we're going to read that now in Galatians 4. He says, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 56. You've got 55 and 56. Eh? Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to read 56 because I've just got it. Yeah. And the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law. So Jesus Christ came to take away the strength of sin. So while anybody is still under the Old Testament law, he's under the strength of sin. Now Jesus Christ came to take away the strength of sin so that we can start to walk a life of not sinning anymore. So, as we see in 1 Corinthians 15, 15 verse 55, um, 56, the angel of the dead is the sonde, and the kracht of the sonde is the wet. So as jy onder die kracht van sonde bly lewe, gaan jy nooit die sonde kan oorwin nie. Jy gaan nooit dood wees vir die sonde nie. So dit is hoekom Jesus gekom het. Want hy het die kracht van sonde, wat onder die wet is, kom breek. Yes. Kom verbreek oor ons lewe. Yes. Wow, dit is net awesome om aan te denk. En nou kan jy dood wees vir die sonde. Nou kan jy die sonde oorwin. Voor dit kon jy nie. Want onthou net, allemaal was onder die oud testamentiese wet geweest. Allemaal was onder die wet van zonde, die boom van kennis, goed en kwaad. Dit is al wat hulle geken het. Yes. Maar die oomlik toe Jesus Christus kom, toe breek hy die kracht van zonde. Nou kan ons verstaan, dat die duivel, um, in Psalm 22, daar lees ons nou so mooi van al die honde wat vir Jesus omsingel het, en die brillende leeuw en al die dinge. Ga lees bykie Psalm 22, dit is amazing. En, Dit was alles hier geweest, gefokus op Jesus, so dat hy moet um, vul onder die um, antuigings en woorde en dinge wat hier omgekom het. Want die oomlik wat hy dit zou doen, zou hy nie die oud testamentiese wet kon verbreek nie. Sou hy nie die angel van die dood, die angel van sonde, 
kon verbreek het nie. Want die duivel was daarop gerig, hierdie mense moet onder die wet bly. Hierdie mense moet onder die kracht van zonde bly. Yes. Hulle moet vastgevang bly. En die oomlik toe Jesus dit oorwin, toe breek hy die kracht van zonde van die oud testamentiese wet. Amen. So when we read here, um, the power of sin that Jesus came to prove was the physical law. Because the physical law gave power to sin. And that is what they tried to force on Jesus. Yeah. They accused him and say, this man doesn't do the law. And they actually tried to force him to do the law. Say so they accused him from a law viewpoint. And say he must, he, he broke the law. So and as a matter of fact, what I try to do to tell him is that you must start doing the law and then we won't prosecute you. We won't yeah. kill you. We won't yeah. crucify you. So that is what I try to force on him. Yeah. Now, when we read in Galatians, and, and I want to read this scripture and then also in Psalms, it's quite amazing. Uh, Galatians 4 verses 4. But when the fullness of the time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem, to redeem those who were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of sons. And because you are sons, God has, se has sent forth the spirit of his son in your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So here we see Jesus Christ came under the law. He was born under the law. And we're not going to talk about that Jesus never really did the law, but yeah. although he was born under the law, to redeem those, to cut those loose yes. that were under the law, so that we can receive the adoptions of Son and by yeah. that receive the Holy Spirit. Because while you are still under the law, you cannot be a yeah. son of God and you cannot receive the Spirit of God. And that's why they tried Jesus to force him to do the things of the law. And when Jesus, should Jesus Christ have done the things of the law, he could not have overcome the law that was the power of sin. So, it says in Galatians 4 verse 4, But when the fullness of the time has come, he has God's son outstreed, born out of a woman, born under the law, om die wat onder die wet was, los te koop, so dat ons die aanneming tot kinders kan ontvang, en omdat jylle kinders is, het God die geest van <coughs> sy sien in jylle harte uitgesteer, en hy roep, Abba Vader, so hier sien ons, dat die mens moes onder die wet uitkom, Jesus was onder die wet gebore, maar hy het nie die wet volbring nie, en hy het woedend vir hom geraak, yes. as hy nie die wet volbring nie, <laughs> want hy wou dit op hom af forceer, op hom yes. af dwing, so dat hy ook onder die kracht van sonde kon inkom, yes. so so hy enig iets van die wet volbring, so hy toegje aan die wet van sonde, so hy het nie, hy het die hele tyd vir elkeen gesê, maar hulle moet loskom onder die wet, hulle moet vrykom onder die wet, en dit is hoe kom hy gekom het, om die mens los te maak, om die mens sy siel te bevry, onder die wet uit, so dit is net amazing, hulle wou die heel tyd vir Jesus forceer, maar hy het nie toegegeen nie, want hy moest die mens loskoop onder die wet uit, en as ons nie, Onder, as ons nog steeds onder die wet is, kan ons die kinders van God wees nie. Yes, hy sê dit in soveel woorde in gelaas heers, dat ons kan die kinders van God wees, terwijl ons onder die wet is nie. En as ons onder die wet uit is, dan kan ons die kinskap kry, wat God vir ons gee. Yes. En dan alleen kan ons die geest van God Amen. ontvang, yes. en deel raak daarvan. Onder die wet kan dit nie gebeur nie. Yes. Now, when we read, go back to Psalm, and we're gonna, we're gonna, uh, 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 give you some examples um, after we've read here in Psalm 22 how Jesus never really, although you were born under the law, I, th I think I can see a bit of 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 a bit never did the things of the law. Now, as in, uh, in Jesus' time, they tried to force the law on him. So in our modern day Christian church, they also use the sword, the word, to try and force and tell us that Jesus Christ did the things of the law. And he never did the things of yeah. the law. He was the promised seed to Abraham when there were no law. Okay? Yeah. So let us read Psalm 22 from verses 12 
to 13 and then 16 and 20 and 21. But as I read, I'm going to give you the verses. Many bulls have surrounded me. Strong bulls of Bashan have encircled me. They gape. In other, in other words, it's a wide open mouth. They gape at me with their mouths. Like a raging and roaring lion. Now this is amazing. He's, he's talking about this uh, bulls of Bashan. Then he talks for, and in verse 16, For dogs have surrounded me. The congregation of the wicked has enclosed me. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now it happened physically as well. But before it happened physically, there was a spiritual encirclement. Mm -hmm. And now he's talking about the dogs and the, uh, the, the bulls of Bashan. They were like a roaring lion. And who is the roaring lion? The devil. Yeah. Satan, the old serpent. He was in the Garden of Eden as well. And he came with the words of God to Eve to deceive her. And exactly now, if you go and read in 2 Corinthians 11, the devil is coming now with the word of God to us as well to deceive us with the sword. Now let us read verse 20. Deliver me from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dark. In other words, it's the demonic powers of Satan that comes with his voice. And we hear it on earth through people's mouths as well. Because eventually, if you are convicted of something, you will eventually talk about it. And when you talk, you know this guy is presenting the kingdom of God or the kingdom of darkness. Then he says, my precious life from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth and from the horns of the wild oxen. Horns is just a strength. And all comes with the lion's mouth with Satan in himself. And this is what Jesus Christ realized. And this is what we read in Revelation 12. That a dragon Satan were there to destroy Jesus Christ. But Jesus Christ never defended himself. But, and because in his heart he kept silent. Then what happened? He gave over to God the judges righteously. Now come see us here in Psalm 22 verse 13, 14, 17. And so on. Baie stere het my omsingel. Sterk is van baas aan het my omring. Hulle het hulle mond in my oopgespalk soos een leeuw wat verskeer en brul. Want honde het my omsingel. Een bende kwaaddoeners het my omring. Hulle het my hande en my voete die grawe. So hier sien ons dat hierdie um, honde en um, uh, 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 bille en al die dinge, <laughs> die bende kwaaddoeners en alles, was hier geestelik by Jesus gewees. Hulle het hom omring, sy siel omring. Maar dit het ook op een stadium fysisch deurgebreek dat hulle sy hande en sy voete deur graaf het. Maar dit het eerst geestelik gebeur, dit het eerst geestelik met die woorde gekom teen Jesus, teen die aanval teen Jesus, hierdie gebril, hierdie leeuw wat gebril het. En wie is hierdie leeuw? Dit is Satan omself met sy demonische machte wat hier teen Jesus gekom het die hele yes, tyd. Hey. En hulle het die mense opgehits om ook fysisk, ja, um, skade aan Jesus te doen, om hom ook fysisch te vermorsel en fysisch um, te smaad. So op die einde van die dag, besef vir mens, dat hierdie woorde, wat geestelik kom, kom eers na jou toe, om jou af te breek en in een richting in te forceer, om jouself te um, verdedig en al die dinge, maar Jesus het het nie gedoen nie. Sodra so, hy dit sou gedoen het, sou hy onder hierdie wet verval het. En dit is nou, jy sat in die dag gestaan, en hy het besef, maar die mense kan nie onder die wet uitkom nie, yes, want dan verloor ek my kracht amen. oor hulle siele, yes. want dit is die kracht wat, wat, wat Satan oor ons siele gehad het, is dat ons onder die wet was, ons kon nie loskom nie, ons kon nie vrykom nie, yes. ons siel moes in die dode reik ingaan, ons moes daar boet vir ons sondes, ons moes daar gestra word vir ons sondes, en Jesus het gekom, om ons siel los te kry, onder die mag van Satan uit, maar sou Jesus daar val, of sou hy daar um, ingee, yes. so ons nie kon loskom, en nou verstaan die mens, die geweldige druk en persing, waar dier Jesus gegaan het, op daar die oomlik, want hy moes staan, hy, hy kon nie onder die wet inval nie, al het hy om gedruk, met woorde, en kry ons dit nie vandag in die christelike kerk nie, dat die, die, die duivel kom na ons toe met die woord van God, soos wat hy in die tuin van enig gedoen het, hy het met die woord van God, na Eva toe gegaan, 
En hy het van gesê, het God nie gesê nie. Nou nog steeds in die, in die, in die, in die, nou in die, in die, in die christelike kerk, kom mense met die woord van God en yes. sê, ons moet nog die wet volbring, ons moet nog onder die wet lewe. Terwijl ons sien, terwijl ons onder die wet lewe, kan hy kracht van zonde nie oor ons breek nie. Ons siene kan nie vrykom nie, ons kan nie loskom nie, ons kan nie kinders van God word nie, ons kan nie die geest van God ontvang nie. En dis hoekom Jesus ons gekom het, so ons onder die kracht van zonde kon uitkom. And this is actually, I, I must actually confess my sin today as well. Um, if you can just go a little bit back to your scripture, because in Afrikaans sometimes I get my bearings a little bit better. Um, <clears throat> when Jesus Christ, when they, when they accused him of breaking the law, now this was a, a, the Sabbath law, they say they he blasphemer against God, etc. He never defended that specific accusation that came against, the, against him. He never did. I usually, when I'm in an argument, if somebody tells me, um, are you doing the Sabbath? Then I will go in an argument with him. And that is my biggest mistake in my life. The very last time I were in an argument like that, and I walked away, I realized to myself, Stanley, what did you do just now? Jesus Christ kept silent. Because at that moment, they came with the word of God against him. And now he knew, Jesus Christ knew, I must keep silent. If I'm going to retaliate, if I'm going to fight back, if I'm going to lash back, I am defending myself. If you know you are right, you don't have to defend yourself. If you keep silent, God will sort your situation. But of course, what happened now? Now, if, if somebody comes with the Old Testament, we must remember the Old Testament was also the word of God. And the Bible says you cannot have two seeds in your life. You cannot have the seed of, of the New Testament and the seed of the seed of the Old Testament. The Old Testament came in fulfillment in the New Testament, and we must walk and teach according to the fulfillment of the New Testament law. Not try and defend us that, um, yes, uh, this is the Sabbath, and leave it. Because what happens, they come with the sword, and if you try to fight back, that sword is going to cut you. And that is the hurt that we feel sometimes. If somebody asks you in meekness yeah. and humbleness, and he asks you, and then you can talk to him, but not in a physical fight. Yes. Because most of the time, people that are living under the Old Testament, and this is, they try to, they, they try to force Jesus under the Old Testament. And if Jesus Christ did the things of the Old Testament, he could never have set us free uh, so that we can be cut off from the kingdom of darkness. Now, when we read in uh, Romans 7, this is actually a complete, I think it's, uh, it's mere half. Minus here, yes. When you read in some, uh, Romans 7, it actually explains everything that we've just said. And we're going to uh, uh, also give you some examples well, well, why we say Jesus never did the things of the Old Testament law. Romans 7 from verse 4 to 6. Romans 7 from what, verse 4 to 6. Therefore, my brethren, you also have become dead to the law through the body of Christ. Through the body of Christ. Because Jesus Christ bore the iniquity of us all. Mm. The power of and the strength of sin that he came to break. That you may be married to one another, to another. To him who was raised from the dead that we should bear fruit to God. So only through Jesus Christ without the law, word we can bear fruit in that. Uh, um, fruit of the spirit can manifest in our life for when we were in the flesh the sinful passions which were aroused by the law were at work in our members to bear fruit to death sure. so when we are still connected to the law it arouses us mm. it entices us to do sin once again and that is what mm. Jesus Christ came his stripes, stripes broke the power of that law mm. But now we have been delivered from the law, <laughs> having died to what we were held by. Now we can understand 1 Peter even more clearly. So that we should serve in the newness of the spirit and not in the oldness sure. of the letter. Hmm. So that held us and this, by his stripes, that connection, that strength, that bond, Jesus Christ came to break, but you must accept him for that strength to be broken in your life. Sure. 
Volgens luister Romeine 7 vers 4 tot 6. So my broeders, as jylle dan ook ten opzichte van die wet dood, dier die lichaam van Christus, om aan de ander te bewerk, namelijk om om wat uit die dode opgewerk is, so dat ons tot eer van God vruchten kan doen. Dit is so cool. Jylle is ook ten opzichte van die wet dood, dier die lichaam van Christus, ja. om aan de ander te bewerk. Yes. So jy moet dood gaan vir die wet, jy moet dood gaan vir die sonde, so dat jy aan Jesus Christus behoort, wow. so dat jy vrug kan dra. Want die ding is, nou kan die geest van God in jou hart uitgesorg word, jy kan hier Jesus Christus aanneem, yes. so nou kan jy vir dit vrug dra. Amen. Nou kan jy vir die lewe vrug dra, anders is jy vir die dood. En dan, want, en dan ster weer die sonde af dier Christus. Ne? Yes. Wow. Want toe ons in die vlees was, het die sondigde hartstochte, wat dier die wet kom, en ons lede gewerk om vir die doodvrugte te dra. So jy, toe jy een sondaar was, het jy vir die doodvrugte dra. Die oude lewe het niks beteken nie. Dit is wat die wet kom doen het. En hy sê, maar nou is ons ons slaaf van die wet, waar dier ons gebonde was. So jy was gebonde onder die wet, as ja. sondaar was jy gebonde onder die wet, maar toe jy die Heere Jesus Christus aanneem, toe sy kracht van die wet, van die sonde oor jou verbreek, dis wat sy yes. wonde kom doen het, dit is wat ons kom gezond maak het, Amen. dit is wat ons kom heel het, so ons onder die kracht van sonde kon uitkom, want Jesus self het dit vir ons kom doen, aangezien ons het afgesterf het, so dat ons in die nieuwigheid van die geest, die wet van die geest, die wet van die genade, en nie in die oudheid van die letter nie. So dit was net cool, ons is nou onder hierdie wet uit, as ons die Heer Jesus Christus aanneem, hy het kom verbreek, yes. hy het kom doodmaak, <laughs> hy het kom verweider, so dat ons kan loskom onder hierdie yes. kracht van sonde, om dit te kan afsterf. Ja, yeah, and when we look, the stuff, Jesus took the accusation, every day of his life, why do you break the law? Now the very first law that was, always thrown in front of him was uh, um, that he broke the Sabbath. Now, we learn from the Bible, if you break one law, you are guilty as if you are doing, breaking all the laws. So you cannot say, okay, I'm, I'm doing 10 laws, but just break one. If you break one, and that, this is what the magnitude or the power of the law was. If, if you break one law, it is as if you are doing no law. Okay? Now, this is the one main thing that was ac uh, uh, accused, accusation that was thrown against Jesus. And we know it. He healed on the Sabbath. He permitted his disciples to uh, um, pluck uh, uh, um, grain from the field. That was, he said to the man, take up your bed and walk on the Sabbath day. So Jesus were never under, ne, never did the Sabbath law. He wasn't, he, how can we say it? I was not under war warpa. Yes, yes, he never did the Sabbath law, okay? He never acted on that. And also in his, in he never sacrificed. Jesus never sacrificed. Nooit, nooit, nooit het hy geoffer nie. Yes. Jo. Kan ek net gaan sê, ok, dat ek nou, ek gaan net gaan sê, saam met jou sê. So, Jesus het nooit die sabbatswet onderhou nie. Nou, ons sien dat hy het mense gezond gemaakt op die sabbat. Hy het sy disciples toe sê my gegee om koring te plik op die sabbat. Hy het vir die man gesê, staan op en loop en vat jou bed op en loop. So, hy het nooit die, die, die wet van die sabbat onderhou nie. Nou, die woord sê vir ons dat as ons een wet verbreek, is het asof ons nie, jylle wet nie gedoen het nie. So, as Jesus nie die sabbats wet gedoen het nie, het hy ook nie die res van die yes. wette volbring nie. Yes. So Jesus het nooit onder die wet gelewe nie. Yes. Hy het nooit volbring nie, hy was nooit onderworpen aan die wet gewees. Yeah, he was born in a nation that was subjected under the law, but Jesus never did the law. <laughs> ja, so hy was in die, um, onder die volk gebore wat onder die, die wet was, yes. maar hy was nooit onderworpen aan die wet nie. Yes. Now also when we look at his prayer, he says, and he teach us to pray, to say our father. He always <laughs> spoke to, to God as his father. Yeah. Now according to the Old Testament, and they said to him, and they righteously judge and say, you blaspheme, you curse God, you insult God, you slander God, to, to call God your father. Because in the Old Testament, they never spoke directly to God, to God as their father. They called him on certain names, Adonai and Elohim and or Hashem. They, they, all, they always used other names. They never spoke to God 
directly in prayer as our father because he's they say to him if you call god your father you say you are equal with god in other words you are a son of god you can speak to god now directly what that was an insult according to the old testament just in his prayer it it is an evidence that jesus christ lived contrary to the physical old testament law Ja, so, ons kan sien dat Jesus sê, um, ons geleer bid, ons vader wat in die hemel is, nee. So, hy het altyd um, God aangesprek as sy vader. Nou, hy het vir hom gesê, hy laster, as hy direct met sy vader praat. Want dan sê hy, moest nou, hy is die seen van God. So, in die oud testament, moest hy altyd God op name aanspreek. En doen ons as kinders van die Heere dit nie vandag nie. Yes. Ons wil nie aanvaard dat God ons vader is nie. Yes. Ons wil nie aanvaard dat God ons sy kind maak nie. Ons wil hom nog steeds op die oud testamentiese name gaan aanspreek waarin ons dink daar is kracht. Maar onthou nie, dis die wet, dis die angel, dis die kracht yes. van sonde wat jou vasthou. Jy kan nie deurbreek en jou vader aanvaard wat in die jimmel is, wat jou siel gereed het, wat jou siel kom losmaak het, en wanneer toe jy kan gaan in die jimmel nie, jy wil vasthou aan die naam, die Heere wil ons vandag losmaak, as kinders van die Heere, om deur te breek in die dinge, en los te kom van die wet, as Jesus dit nie volbring het nie, hoekom wil jy as kind van die Heere dit volbring, Jesus het vir ons kom weis, as hy enigsins, enigsins toegegeet in die wet van sonde, so hy nie die sonde kon verbreek nie, so hy nie die kracht van sonde kon verbreek het nie, en ons as kinders van die Heere wil onder die kracht van sonde bly, dit is ook om ons nie kan oorwin nie, dit is ook om ons nie oorwinnende lewe van kracht en heerlijkheid kan lewe nie, want ons bly trek getrek onder die oud testamentiese wet van die kracht van sonde, en die Heere wil ons losmaak vandag. Ja, het sê is hier in Romans 7, when, when, you are still under the law, the sinful passions are aroused by the law. So ons sondige natuur en gewoontes word opgewek dier die wet. Now, if Jesus Christ lived under the law, it means if he did the law according to what was written, it means that he had sin in his life, he would have been aroused by sin. Sin would have been in his life if he lived in a manner exactly like the law. He was born in a nation that were under the law, but he didn't do the law because the promise of the, that God made to Abraham that he will deliver his people was made to Abraham and Abraham was righteous in the sight of God before a law existed. And he said, in your seed, it will continue again. And Jesus never did the things of the law. He lived a contrary towards the law. Yeah, amen. And this we now we as Christians, we succumb, we give in to the preaching, and we fear and tremble. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I'm doing the Sabbath, you know, and, and, and now we are calling God on names, like in the Old Testament. So we we succumb, we while Jesus Christ 2,000 years ago broke, that's what he said, 2,000 years ago, by my stripes you were healed. If you accept it 2,000 years ago, I already broke the power of sin, the, 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 the power uh, the, that arouses sin in our lives. And we must come under from that. You, we, our, our Sunday meeting is not a Sabbath. We don't have a Sabbath on a Sunday. Christ in you is either Lord of you and it's Lord of your Sabbath. You must be in Sabbath every single day. In the rest of the Lord, in the rest of the Lord every single day. We don't see Sunday as Sabbath in our congregation. It's just a day that we can come together because most of us are, 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 are not working. That's all. It's not a physical Sabbath day. You must have Sabbath in your heart. Yeah. You must have rest of the Lord. This is Sabbath. Yes. Om elke dag in die rest van die Heere te wees. Dit is jou sabbat. Yes. Ons sê nie dag as die sabbat nie. Yes. Ons kom maar nie by mekaar omdat allemaal een beetje af is op een zondag. Maar dit is nie ons sabbat nie. Yes. Want die sabbat, jou rust moet in God wees. Jou rust moet in Jesus Christus wees. Jy moet verlos wees. Jy moet vry wees van die oud testamentiese wet. Wat jou yes. siel in die helen afgetrek het. Yes. Want die siel kon nie loskom nie. Die siel, ons moet vandag iets verstaan mense. Yes. In die oud testament was, moes jou siel hel toe gaan. Wil jy onder die wet bly so dat jy weer moet hel toe gaan. Nee, dan gaan nie vir jou tweede kans wees nie. Jesus gaan jy nie weer kom uithal uit die hel het nie. 
Dit het slechts één keer gebeur, en wanneer ons onder die wet van zonde blij, gaan jij, jy, jy sê dit met jou mond, jy verklaar dit, dat ek moet weer naar die doodereik toe afzak. Ek moet weer gevangen wees onder die duivel. Die duivel moet weer een hoofd as oor my siel hee. En dit is wat Jesus kom verbreek het, hy het ons kom losmaak, hy het ons kom genees van die plaag wat onder ons was, dat ons siel in die doodereik moes ingaan. Nou, wanneer ons die Heere Jesus Christus aanneem wat die wet kom verbreek het, die kracht van sonde kom verbreek het, nou kan hy ons red en nou kan ons die eeuwige lewe saam met hom ingaan. Ja, yeah, this is the main thing is, that in the Old Testament, those that were subject to the Old Testament, went down to Hades went down to hell. So if you say, I must still do this Old Testament, and this Old Testament, and that Old Testament, you're actually declaring with your own mouth, and your own actions, that I must still, uh, that I must go down to hell, that I must go down to Hades. That's why, we as children of God, sometimes we feel so guilty, and anguish in our lives, because we already, the judge, we feel the judgment of, of hell because we are we cling to uh, on old testament things and jesus christ 2000 years ago by his stripes we were healed by his stripes he came to destroy the strength and the power of sin and the, the law arouses sin in our lives and we can become free today we can become free yeah. if you have done the things of the old testament law and even fleshly physical <laughs> things that you think has power uh, 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 in your life, like physical uh, physical thing, a red cross here and a red ribbon there and flying of flags and whatever, not, whatever. There's so many, so many, we're uh, um, There's so many attachments in the Christian church that are not biblically correct. And if we do those things again, we declare by our actions that we are going to be lost one day. Sure. En dit is ook om Jezus vir ons hierdie skuld offer geword het. Yes. As jy nog hierdie oud testament het, sê dinge gedoen het, en as jy nog nie onder uitgekom het, en nie mooi verstaan het nie, gaan vandag, hy is jou skuld offer, gaan belei jou sonde voor die Vader, so die bloed van Jesus Christus, die lewe van Jesus Christus, wat hy vir jou kom gee het, wat hy jou kom losmaak het, die wonde wat hy gevat het in sy siel, om jou te kom loskryf van die macht van sonde, so dat dit oor jou kan breek, so dat jy vandag verlossing kan kry, so dat jy los kan kom, so dat jy in vryheid kan begin lewe in jou geestelike lewe, want ons is nie vry nie, ons is gebonde onder die wet, en Heere wil ons vandag losmaak, and we just want to confirm, that the word of God says we are allowed and to pray for one's physical healing. It's yes, a gift. Okay. There is a gift of healing. And actually, the word of God talks about gifts of healing. We've got a whole a lesson about that. So there's physical, there's different aspects of healing. But what Jesus Christ, in what, what he says in Isaiah 53, 1 Peter 2, the scripture that we did today, was about the, the soul, the inner healing. And even if you are, your body are physically ill and has a chronic sickness and you are spiritually free, then you will enter the kingdom of God. Then Jesus Christ has broken the power of sin in your life so that you can have eternal life with him. So it's not about the physical primarily. It's first and foremost the spiritual, the inward. Ja, en dit is die woord, sê so mooi, sê as ons terugkeer na die wet, dan word ons losgemaak van Christus. So, as jy terugge na die wetiese dinge toe, dan het jy teruggeval, jou siel gaan hel toe. Jy is losgemaak van die genade van Jesus Christus, wat die wet oor jou kom verbreek het, wat die kracht van sonde oor jou verbreek het. En want hy net, omdat die kracht van sonde verbreek is, nou kan ons dit afsterf. Nou kan ons werk daar maak daar meer. Dit is nog steeds daar, ons struggle nog met sonde. Maar die kracht af van die wet van sonde waar ons lewe is verbreek, ons hoef nie meer hel toe te gaan nie. Nou kan ons die sonde vat en ons kan daarmee begin werk. En ons kan voor ons vader kom en ons sonde belei en ons ongerechtig heen en al die dinge. So dat ons siel kan loskom en vrykom van die sonde. Maar die kracht van die sonde is waar ons verbreek, want ons hoef nie meer hel toe te gaan vir ons sonde nie. Yeah, and we must not lend our ears out to those that preach us, to us. We must do the, the, it comes with the sword, like they came against Jesus Christ, and attach ourselves against, mm. uh, again uh, to, uh, to the law. Now, Werner has uh, quoted here in his comments, he, he, he makes mention of the scripture, it says, 
When Jesus Christ, when the Son makes us free, we are free indeed. When the Son makes us free, not the law, the Son, yes. Jesus Christ. That, and that is when we have the love of God, our first love in our hearts. But that's us gereed. Yes. That's us free. Jy kan nie gereed word onder die wet nie. Nooit ooit nie. Jy yeah. gaan verloor gaan. Amen. And this is what the Lord said in Ephesians, the, 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 the uh, congregation, the church in Ephesians in uh, Revelation, because he's talking about the first love. And uh, yeah, he says, you have gone astray and you've left your first love. You've done all these Christian things. And uh, we see in our churches today, in the Christian world, we do, everyone is doing the outward things. But then there's this lawish things that the Christian church th still does. He's, and then the Lord says to Ephesians, turn back. Then come back to your first love. You've been saved by the preaching of the word. You receive the, the spirit by the preaching of yes. the word through Jesus Christ. And that will save your soul in the end. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Ons is so bang, daar gaan nie vir ons voorsiening wees en dan bid ons God op sy naam net vir voorsiening. Yes. Yes, onder die wet. Or you give more finances to receive more back. That is the Old Testament law. So, ons moet daar onder uitkom. God is ons vader, ons moet om anneem as ons vader, hy het ons aangeneem as sy kind. Hy is ons vader, jy hoef geen oud testamentiese naam vir God te geen. Nope. Gaan spreek om aan as jou vader, kry jou verhouding met hom, kry hom lief as jou eerste liefde. Amen. Maak, kry jou verhouding met hom, praat Amen. jou leven met hom uit, dat jy onder die harde, wettiese, ongenadiglike wet van sonde en die kracht van sonde kan uitkom. Yeah, if you want financial provision, we call God on names. Is disrespectful. You can ask your father in the name of Jesus Christ for um, provision, and then, as he wills, he will provide for you. As you know, I deal with what Jesus for you have said that as you know, we have heard some of the devil and the father. Yes. So we see it so clearly that the devil is your father as you under the Old Testament. So Jesus said it in so many words. En ons is so verblind as kinders van die Heere, om terug te gaan onder die wet. Want ons voel dis geestelik, ons voel dit is wijsheid, ons voel dit is inzicht. Dis een gestrengheid met die vlees en dit beteken niks. Ja, yeah, it's, it's boasting of the flesh. Want dit, dit voel die vlees. Yes. Alles wat die wet is, voel die vlees. Jy gaan doen fysische dinge, jy gaan doen die, die feeste en jy doen al die dinge. Dit voel die vlees. Maar wanneer jy werk die Heere in geest en waarheid dien, dan besef jy, Heere, die kracht van sonde is nou oor my gebreek, en ek moet het afsterf. Ek kan nie in die sonde meer vasthou nie. En dis ook om jy my kom gezond maak het, so dat ek kan loskom van die sonde, verlossing kan kry van sonde. Ja, yeah, this is the thing, a stern warning for me, uh, Stanley Franks, that I must not go and fight against, again, with somebody, that because you know, you think you've got now the knowledge, you can go and maybe convince that other person. Leave him. Yeah, God, will, God will sort it out as it should be. That person knows he's wrong. That's why he's starting a spiritual fight with you. That's so. Praise the Lord. Oh, as we need to lose, come as we pray. Come as we need to find an answer and be more. Here, here, um, get the answer. My husband, I bet you can do it. See, my husband, he's sound. Ask her. Ons kan loskom, die kracht van sonde is wat ons verbreek. Amen. Jy kan loskom van sonde af, jy hoef nie onder dit te blij nie. En dit was net my so oorsing gewees om te weet dat dis wat ons siel gezond gemaakt is. Amen. May you have a blessed day, thank you that you uh, were tuned in today. And um, yes, amen. If the Lord willing, we see each other Wednesday evening. Ja, yeah, Wednesday evening, en jy moet een lekke dag hee, en ons bly bid vir mekaar, bid vir ons, ons bid vir jy, bid vir die konferentie, bid vir alles, en ons loof die jyre, en mag jy wonderlijke en geseende dag hee. Bye bye! bye.